video. So we're going to talk about the two column video script format and uh, upcoming assignments about that. So um, first of all, did I make an announcement or did I send it? I'm not sure. It was the 16th. Okay. So, upcoming, we have announced, yes, we are meeting on October 23rd to read our two column video scripts. That might be the VOSOT, or if anyone has actually got their package ready at that point, that would be wonderful. So that is the mandatory day when we will all meet up. Uh, the other thing is I emailed out a mass email to say that um, the assignment the VOSOT assignment that was due on Tuesday when we didn't have class um, is extended till next Tuesday, October 23rd. And I just said there'll be no late penalty. Uh, my apologies for not adjusting the assignment due dates to take account of this faculty flex day. So it all came at you too fast. And we didn't even have a class in order to explain too well uh, more about the video formatting than we've already seen. So that's what we're going to do in this class. And so when we meet up next Tuesday, mandatory day, uh, I'm sure you'll have at least your VOSOT script done, and you may well have your uh, package done if, um, if you do a little work on it over the weekend. Uh, I hope that will work out for you. If it doesn't, you know, uh, we're being uh, lenient with assignment due dates at this point because everything was coming a little too compressed. Okay. That said, um, Ron, have you managed to uh, make contact with someone to interview? Yeah. Awesome. Was it George? Yeah. Oh, very good. Great. So glad to hear that. Yeah, I've had you know, it's like, uh, look over the audio and then he said, uh, I guess, come see him if I have any more questions. That's because fantastic. Because the first time I did it, it's like, I had questions. And I tried my hardest to make good questions, but I didn't feel like they were good enough. OK, OK. Well, I'm sure you got enough to do the profile anyway, which is great. So that's good. And then Fran, were you able to meet the, the neighbor finally? You did. OK. I turned in. Oh, fine. As, believe it or not, in this busy midterm period, I'm not actually with my face to the oh the inbox, but I do promise guys to get them all graded uh, before the end of the weekend. So yeah, it's yeah, just... It, it was great. Um, oh, sweet. Great. Yeah, I, I, we did about 20 minutes, um, got a lot of information, um, and actually it's longer than two, it's a little longer than two minutes, but because I tried to... Oh, that's always a problem, right? Compressing it to make it short enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, you'll have a chance to expand out a little bit on the, on the next assignment, so that's cool. Great, yeah. So I know I'm a little behind grading uh, those radio features, uh, but you know, all that I will come back with are going to be maybe formatting changes or stuff like that. So you can feel comfortable going ahead using that same material for your TV package, OK? So. Um, Let's remind ourselves what's, what's on the table, what's due. These are two scripts of the same format. They're for slightly different story types. So these are television scripts. We're into TV reporting and writing now. And uh, um, there's a couple of story types that we're looking at, the VOSOT and the TV package. So first of all, um, I did send out a link to the uh, um, archive version of the course from last year to sort of help you see um, some examples of that type of reporting. Uh, you know, I'm just wondering, should we go to the Cron 4 website like I did last year and just check out some new stories and uh, basically see um, we don't want to watch live, we want to go to the video center. Just looking and seeing. So I don't really know what types of stories these are until we actually click on them and look at them. So let me draw a little structural outline of these two story types. 
and I'm asking you to write one of each in these two different upcoming assignments. Has anyone done it and turned it in, by the way, yet? OK, bravo. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Way to go. That's fantastic. So uh, uh, otherwise, uh, hopefully this is useful information for everybody. But since I haven't actually said it, I feel, yeah, I really should say it, right? You got to ask and be clear about what you're asking for if you're a teacher. So these are two types of news stories, drawn for good examples, I think. I hope we'll find some. Uh, the VOSAT, this stands for voiceover. voiceover. Thank you, Chow. Voiceover, sound on tape. Okay. And uh, sound on tape is abbreviated, like you see, SOT. And we used to call that actuality in radio. In other words, this is the sound bite. That's what the SOT part stands for. And VO, you know this from just everyday life, voiceover is when somebody's talking on top of video. So the structure of the VOSAT is in the first part, the anchor is talking on camera. And we abbreviate that as on cam. In the second part of the VOSAT, which is, you know, if this is typically 45 seconds. So let's say the anchor talks for 15 seconds on camera. Um, <clears throat> at a certain point, we cut to videotape or file now. Or sometimes they'll call this B roll. And this is pictures. So if the story is about um, you know, a forest fire, the anchor will be on camera for 15 seconds talking about the fire. And he'll continue to talk, or she will continue to talk, while we see pictures of the fire. So that's the voiceover part. That's the VO, right? Because the anchor is talking over B-roll. And then, in the third part of this story, we see what we call an SOT, sound on tape, which is a sound bite with the person doing the sound bite, the, the person is on camera. And then typically we come back to the anchor for a last sentence or two to close the story. So this is called a VOSAT, and it's typically 45 to 60 seconds. And about half of your evening news program will be VOSATs, or close to it. Um, so let's see if we can find a good example of a VOSAT. And maybe before I uh, go pitching around on the Cron4 site, I'm getting scared that I'll pull up five different things that are not a VOSAT. So let's. Just Where does that say is? Where is that? In our, uh, number three. Number three, SOT, sound bite on camera. All right, on camera. Yeah, sound bite on camera. And Ron, all of these, if you're, if you're able to get into our website, all of this is all described um, in the PDF um, and written up right here, for instance. So. Uh, I just like to repeat myself endlessly, it seems. So, you know, the anchor on camera, the anchor continues to read, the VO happens over the tape, the B roll then stops, and there's the SOT. And then finally, <coughs> the anchor might or might not return on camera to read a closing line. So, that's, that's the way they finish it up. Okay. William? Um, just looking at this assignment and then the, the, the following one, the TV package script, is this kind of the, a similar like model to what we were working with uh, previously in radio, where this is kind of a, a wrap and the package is kind of a feature? Well said, sir. Well said. And it's exactly, believe it or not, the exact same type of teaching strategy. I try to get you to do sort of the, I get you to do the VOSAT. And then when it comes to do the package, it's basically a VOSAT with some extra stuff, you know? And that's, um, that's, that's the way it is. Very perceptive, William. That's exactly it. Cool. So on, um, 
let's see what we've got here on Vosot, a sample Vosot. <clears throat> they say it is. Uh, I don't like showing stuff that I haven't seen before. Yeah, okay, this might have it. So let's see. This, they say this is a sample Vosot. Let's see if it conforms to... Here's your KDLT Sports. Welcome back. Well, coming off of a bye week, the Jacks of SDSU got back to business Saturday, One. popping Western Illinois 31 to 10. Sitting atop the Missouri Valley right. Conference this at 5-1 and overall and 3-0 and in the conference, Coach says the Jacks played a complete game, which is exactly what they were looking for. Xander came through. Uh, we did make some plays throwing the ball, but uh, a little irregular. that's exciting. It's exciting that we can return we opening kickoff that's and turn the an interception early in the third period. So uh, that's a complete game, complete uh, effort. We just need to clean up some things, and we will. The Jacks are in Cedar, Fall, Cedar Falls, Iowa next Saturday to take on Northern Iowa. Well, there you go. That's actually a very good example from local news. So he starts on the anchor. It cut to B-roll with the game, people running while the anchor continue to talk. Then eventually it cut to the, ho the co coach, right, for the SOT part. That's the sound bite. And then they went back to B-roll for the closing line or two from the anchor. It could be over B-roll. You could also sometimes see the anchor in the studio uh, and, you know, doing the last two lines. So that's a classic Vosot. The only thing that was a little different there was that they put the sound of, of the coach under a little more B-roll. And usually they do that because they want to make a cut in what the coach says and they have to cover that cut. Coach wasn't speaking in media friendly sound bites maybe. So you had to, they had to hide a cut. Ron, question? No, I'm just going to make sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm eager for questions, can you tell? <laughs> okay, I love questions. Sorry about that, I'm going to have a question later. Oh, that's okay, all right, keep thinking. <laughs> keep thinking of questions, excellent. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So, that's uh, considering I was unprepared, I was kind of lucky that that was a decent example of a Vosot. Okay, so our, our assignment for this assignment, uh, the Vosot script, um, is uh, I have supplied uh, some facts and a, re a reel of B-roll with an interview on it for you to choose from when you write your script. So uh, basically what I'm asking you to do is from, from the information that I give you, write up a 45 second Vosot, starting with the anchor, then more voiceover over B-roll, and you get to choose what pictures you want in the B-roll from the video here. And then finally, finishing with a sound bite from uh, the captain, the police uh, captain, uh, and uh, then a little one or two lines from the anchor to close the story. So I'm asking you to do the classic Vosot. Um, and I'm giving you facts here. So uh, remember, I mean, or maybe some folks weren't here on the day that we actually showed the video. So this is, you know, the raw footage from a cameraman or camera person's uh, shooting on site. So there's, uh, you know, there's, um, I'm just running through here. There's long shots of police. There's uh, the simulation is shot, you know, just really roughly pictures of cops moving through, uh, people pretending to be victims and stuff. Uh, there's another pretend victim. There's close-up, close-ups on um, let's see, the rubber bullets that were used. There's a close-up of a siren. So that siren could be used for Nat sound if you wanted to use that. Uh, there is, you know, the intruder being uh, immobilized. And uh, then there's the captain doing his training. And we've been doing this ever since Columbine. So it's nothing new. Uh, we do this for every police. So, you know, you're the writer coming to this and you know that you first have to give a lead with some information to the anchor. Then you're going to be talking over the video. So that's a special art in itself because 
Uh, what you are doing is you're telling the story, but you're also able to tell it with visuals, and you're trying to work out how the visuals and the telling of the story verbally work together, which is interesting, and I think you'll find in your package is where you really get a chance to make some choices that are interesting about that. And then finally, you need to pick the best uh, SOT that you can from uh, Captain Azuelo, who's, you know, <clears throat> he's, he's okay. <clears throat> and uh, so I've given you the facts, and I've also transcribed everything that Captain Azuelo says. So literally for the SOT, you can go in here, choose what you want, copy and paste it into <clears throat> the SOT part of your script. So that, that should be, you know, relatively simple for you. Uh, the um, middle section of the story and the anchor is where you're going to be doing your work, I guess. So the anchor should have the lead in it, you know, and what goes in the lead? Typically some of the five W's. So, you know, who was doing what, where, and when. And uh, when you cut to the videotape, you're going <clears> to <throat> basically tell more with visuals and stuff like that. So if, if I was working on this, I would take a look at the facts. So here we are. We're working with the facts here. Let me blow them up so we can see them really well. So police officers and trainees and National Guard troops and some U.S. Marshals took part in an active shooter drill at the empty Reynolds Elementary School building. Well, what do we have there? We have, uh, we have the who, we have the what, we have the where. I don't think we ever know about the when exactly. So you could say today, you know, and that's it. So that could compose your lead, basically, uh, who, what, when and where. Um, then maybe in the second part for the VO, you could say, you know, get into some of the specifics. So the goal was to simulate conditions at a school facing a threat from an armed intruder. Trainees use paintball bullets. And you might, at that time, choose to show the paintball bullets if you want. Or you could show other stuff, the broken window, the people with guns, and stuff like that. So, and then eventually you want to go to the SOT of Captain Azuelo. So I think you can very quickly pick up on the information that you need to put in there and the structure of the VOSAW. So really your work here is simply to write it up cleanly in your own voice with um, the, the right formatting. Uh, remember that these scripts, just like the radio scripts, they have a slug at the top, so there's a story title, there's your name as the reporter, there's the runtime, which will run to two minutes, two and a half. Uh, then it says, you know, this is what I'm looking for. So when the anchor is on camera, you know, a lead, conversational tone, you know, you want to probably give the, the four or five W's that we talked about there. In the VO section, now this is where it's, a little more challenging because what you're doing is you're writing the words and the video together. And it says here, this is important, I think, copy and video should match. However, copy should not slavishly describe the video. So in other words, I might be saying, you know, it was a simulated drill designed to uh, uh, train the police to deal with an active shooter. They used rubber bullets. So I'm going to say they used rubber bullets, but I'm not going to say here we can see two rubber bullets that they used. You know what I mean? Because that would be, that's what I mean by being slavishly, you know, to slavishly describe the video. There's no reason that we do that. What we do is we write a nice telling of the details of the story and we use those shots so that people understand what's going on. We don't have to say, and then we saw all the people run through the hallway. And then we saw the assailant fall down dead, supposedly, right? We don't need to say all that. We can say that, you know, uh, the simulation tried to give police an experience of the chaos and, and stress that any kind of active shooter uh, uh, situation brings up, you know? So, so you, and then you're showing them all like freaking out and stressful. 
So the thing to do is you're writing with the idea that I'm going to be showing these pictures, but you're not describing the pictures. You're kind of doing the two at once. If you can do that, that is, you know, uh, that is good writing for TV. Isn't the total runtime 45 seconds? Oh, sorry, the VOSA. You're right. It's the package is two minutes. This is 45 seconds. Thanks, Chow. You see, I'm mixing up. Two assignments at once is way more than I can deal with. So what this all looks like, uh, here's an example. So this is the format that is described in um, the PDF document I gave you. But you know we can see it here. First of all, we got the three-line slug at the start, school training, name of reporter, total runtime, 45 seconds. It's all in two columns, one for video, one for audio. And you can label them such if you want. Just about everything is all caps, except for your visual instructions in the left column in the video. That is sentence case. Okay. Now the easiest way to make two columns like this is going to be to, if I, you know, for instance, create, uh, you know, basically, how did I do this? This is a two column table. So I would go insert, hello, insert a table, and then make a two column table if I was using Word, right? Uh, if I was using Google Docs, it's not quite the same controls, but it's pretty much the same. Is anybody using anything else that you'd like to know about or see? Does Word or Google Docs cover it? The important thing is whatever you're using, make a two column table with as many rows in it as you want. You know? And you can add more rows later on if you need them. The nice thing about doing it this way is you can really space out the content so that the video and the audio line up exactly. If you make a, a, a Word document which is formatted as, you know, two sides of the Word document, it will never work out this well. So instead, go insert table and make a table like this. And if you have too many rows, you can delete some. If you don't have enough, you can add some. All right. So let's look at how we're writing this out. So on the first line, we've got the video side, we've got the audio side. And then over here, the VOSOP begins with the anchor, says anchor, and then in brackets, on cam, meaning we see the anchor on camera. right? And then this is what the anchor says. Earlier today, first responders and police cadets trained to defend a school from an active shooter. It's an annual event involving volunteers who pretend to get shot. I'm not saying that this is really good. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> there we go. All right, in the audio, Next thing we see, it says Nat sound. So we know we're hearing Nat sound. We're hearing a siren blaring. Like, eh, 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 eh. And in the picture, we see the siren on the wall. You can say close up, medium shot, long shot if you want. Or you can just tell me even simpler what we see. All right. Now here's a very important thing. The, the little letters VO here, that indicates that from here on in, we're hearing voiceover. All right, so VO right there. You're telling us in the script, oh, now this is voiceover. So the anchor still talks. And as we see the woman outside going, help, help, there's somebody, blah, 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 uh, we hear the anchor saying, it's a challenging drill because they have to forget about all the chaos and noise. They use rubber bullets and blanks to simulate real firearms. So I put in a close up of the bullets at that point, right? I want people just to understand. Police told us the cadets have a lot to learn. And that is, you know, going into my SOT of Captain Azuelo. Okay. So my only other remarks about the VO section is I'm describing what I'm seeing. The woman calls the police. And super. Okay. So super means when we uh, 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 superimpose on the screen a title. And I'm just wondering if in our example that we just saw, uh, that sample VO. <clears throat> uh, OK, well, right, right there on the anchor is a super. Uh, by that, I mean, oh, my goodness. Name and position. yeah, thank you. There you go. This Nick Lenz right down here, this is a super. So also known as a lower third when they talk about it in editing terms. 
So you just, in your script, you write super Nick Lens. And so what you're saying is that's it. So in your script, you would be writing super uh, uh, Captain, Captain Azuelo, Captain David Azuelo. So here's another super. John Stegemeyer, SDSU, head of football coach, right? So um, that's your super. So in the script, it would say super, all caps, and then John Stegmeyer, SFSU head football coach. So you guys could call, your super could be uh, super, you know, Captain David Azuelo, comma, Tucson PD, because this is a story from Tucson. So you could write that in your script, uh, thereby giving, you know, this is attribution. This is, again, we need to know who's talking. In radio, you have to say his name. But in television, you can not say his name, but just print it underneath him. OK? So I picked uh, this SOT. I mean, I picked the SOT right out of the assignment, right? Uh, where is it? It's up in here. It says, teaching them to go directly to the threat, stop that person from killing anyone, and then be able to compress the period of time it takes to render aid to the victims. I believe that's what I took. Um, so back to it. Something like that. OK. I think I fudged the end of the SOT or something. You weren't supposed to notice that. OK, and then at the end, part four, you come back to, in this case, VO. And so we see a little bit more of the cadets standing around. And it says, all recruits are required to do the training so that they're prepared for the worst. And that's the end of it, right? There's no lockout because this is an anchor. So the anchor will, you know, he'll just be ready to say the next story. Okay. So do I be well just You, no, nope, you can, this would be like the strict minimum, right? So this will be fine if you do this. Okay. We don't label B-roll. Uh, you could put that in, like you could put B-roll CU paint bullets, B-roll LS cadets standing around, but long shot. But but we know that that's what it is in in the videos and columns. So be okay. All right. So this two-column video script format is throughout both television and corporate video. Anything dealing with video, two columns, one carrying what you see, one carrying what you hear. That's, that's the way to go about it. So questions about this one? Uh, yeah, so we can choose whatever footage we can use. Yeah, that's right. You right. just go through. And, and you don't need to give me a time or anything on it. You can. Uh, um, you can, you know, just say you're describing this, you know, medium shot victim lying on the floor, or simply just victim lying on the floor. That's all, you know. Uh, and you, you, so you choose what you, what you want. I, because I had the gnat sound, I liked the, you know, the the sound of the beep, 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 the siren and stuff. Okay. So this one should be pretty quick because I gave you the facts. You can copy paste the SOT. Um, so hopefully this will go quick and well. And uh, so this would be a great thing to have in hand next Tuesday to be able to read it out. All right. Yes, Chow. You wouldn't have shot is mandatory? Uh, it would be better just because it helps me understand you know, and again, I would say long, long shot, medium shot, or close up, that's enough. You know? So a long shot, if you see a bunch of people like standing around or running around with guns, you know, medium shot, if it's just one person kind of cut at the waist and then close up, if the bullets are on the floor, it's a close up. That's it. Let's keep it to that. Yeah, long shot, medium shot. Close up. You see, in regular television production, the visual side of this would come together as you know the reporter sits with an editor, and the editor would be taking everything that the videographer brought back from the event, like basically the tape that I gave you with the SOT and all that pictures. So the editor is actually 
you know, with the reporter in the room making those choices. But we're scripting them because what I want you to do is to, you know, to think about writing. How do you write uh, and sync it up with what you see? That's basically it. Again, as I said, you know, the the more the more challenging little bit of this vosat could be to write effectively to the pictures without just saying, and here we see the police running around through darkened hallways with their guns drawn. You know, it's great to say police, you know, police run through the darkened hallway with their guns. You don't want to be like referring directly to the video. And then we see this, and then we, you don't need that, right? That's all in the left column in video. What we want is what is read, you know, read on camera. Uh, we want that to flow. So, you know, just if you're interested in the, you know, being really artful about this, you want to make sure that you're using the pictures, but you're not describing them sl slavishly. So, any questions about this one? Yeah. Where is that? Uh, in the assignments, so let me just go zero. Um, so on the tab with the assignments, uh, there it is. So it's this one, the Vosot script, assignment Vosot script. And then I guess in the modules, it's probably in the module for last week, I would guess. There, it's in week nine, the assignment Vosot script. Okay. And right underneath it is that PDF which has all the examples and terminology and stuff like that. Are you good? So let's just watch a little bit of Kron's finest and let's see what's what these stories are like. Yeah. Joining us on the phone right now, Walter Wallace, uh, spokesperson with the Air Quality Quality Management District. Walter, uh, let's get straight to it. How bad is it out there this evening? Someone talking to us on the phone is not going to make good television. The San Jose Catholic Diocese plans to release the names of the priests accused of abusing children tomorrow. These will be the names and statuses of every priest who has already been found to be credibly accused of abusing minors. Over the past few weeks, the diocese has held a number of listening sessions leading up to tomorrow. Our for Michelle Kingston attended tonight's session at Santa Teresa Church. No cameras were allowed inside. Okay, so this is not going to be a Vosat. This is a package. So this is the second type of story that I wanted to work with you on. And this is, you know, if half your news class cast is Vosats, the other half is packages. So in the package, you basically have the anchor introducing the story. The second part is the reporter doing the lead, which in TV is called a stand-up, because the reporter is typically standing up in front of some place, like this. Um, so it's the way that TV gets you out of your living room and out there standing up somewhere, uh, seeing where the news actually happens. So this is called a stand-up. And uh, TV reporters really like stand-ups because they actually get on camera. And uh, they, their careers you know, uh, are, are that much better if, uh, if people watching TV can see them instead of, instead of just them writing for the anchor person. So the typical package begins with the anchor. Uh, they do an intro. And they introduce the reporter. So they say, we're going to hear from, you know, Cron 4's so-and-so, and then so-and-so does the stand-up. And then it basically becomes a Vosot after that, okay? So the reporter does a stand-up, and then it'll turn into VO, and it'll turn into SOTs at some point. And the structure of the story will vary a little bit. You may, you may or you may not come back to 
another stand up in the middle of the story if it's a longer package where they have to shift gears a little bit there may be a, another stand up in the story uh, and then it will end like a Vosat again with either back to the anchor back I'm sorry back to the reporter either on, on camera or not doing a lockout which you remember is you know this is Cecil Cecil for KCSF would be your would be your lockout. So the package has a more flexible structure, but that's it basically. It's like anchor reporter stand up, and then this part is basically a vosot until probably you come back to the reporter for the end of it with a lockout. Yes. So let's look again, you know, let's start this example up again and see what it is. Terrible story about child abuse. But I can tell you about... Let's run this back. So we have two anchors, so That's someone's... Session. ...abusing minors. <sighs> Sorry, folks. There we go. Let's roll it. Let's not. <laughs> accused of abusing children tomorrow. These will be the names and statuses of every priest who has already been found to be credibly accused of abusing minors. Over the past few weeks, the diocese has held a number of listening sessions leading up to tomorrow. Our first Michelle Kingston attended tonight's session at San Antonio. They introduced the reporter. No cameras were allowed inside, but I can tell you about 100 people were in attendance. About a dozen spoke, some of them victims of abuse. I'm here today to hear about specific actions Yo. that we're taking in the diocese to make sure that our children are safe. Tonight, dozens gathered at Santa Teresa Catholic Church in hopes of receiving more information, more answers from the Diocese of San Jose on the sexual abuse allegations. I don't really always know the actions SOT. the church is taking. I've heard later from our um, priest that uh, the bishop is very proactive and has no tolerance, but I just need to hear that. On Wednesday, Bishop Patrick McGraw told church members there needs to be more transparency in the way the church responds to the sexual abuse allegations of minors by priests. He hopes that releasing the names will help victims, survivors, and families heal. There will be no, there'll be maybe one or two tomorrow that will be different. But since uh, 2002, those intervening years, we realized how important it was to the victims uh, for their um, well, peace of mind, for transparency, uh, that they would see the whole list together. And if there are other people out there uh, who have not come forward, now is the moment for them to do so. The bishop hey. said no one at this time is under any kind of investigation and that the cases involving the priests on the list have all been closed. In San Jose, Michelle Kingston, Cron 4 News. Okay, there you go. So the precise layout of this one, we have the two anchors. Uh, they, you know, give us some general information. Yeah, this is more on the San Jose diocese story we hear from our reporter so and so so and so so that's something you should put into your script you know we hear from our reporter Chow Trong and then reporter Chow would be there you do the lead remember so she did in typical lead was who's doing what where so we're in this church and the over a hundred people were there and what they were they were doing is you know what they were doing uh, then there's the cut to B-roll of the outside of the church. Basically, it's not exciting B-roll, but a lot of television is just not exciting. Uh, with voiceover. Then we got to your first SOT, who was a parishioner. I can't remember her name. I didn't write it down. And then more voiceover got us to the bishop. He's explaining himself. And then the final voiceover actually contained the lockout. So we didn't see the reporter come back. We, we did the lockout in VO. So that is basically, that's a you know, very typical TV package, which typically runs two to three minutes, but may run up to seven minutes on a channel like NBC Investigator, which is, uh, you know, they do longer packages. 
so uh, that is the basic structure. So the second assignment that's kind of on your table right now is to write your radio feature up as a package. William, did you have a hand up? Uh, yeah, I was just um, curious, uh, following up with what you're, you're talking about, uh, how, uh, what do you want us to use for that second source? That's, it depends on your story and depends on um, basically what you can find and what your story is. So your second source could be either uh, more, let's say if you're doing a profile, it could be a person other than the person you interviewed okay. talking about them. Uh, I do now remember what your topic is. So it, it might be a coworker at Starbucks, or it might be a teacher, or it might be you know a family member, but someone who can give another point of view on the profile person. Okay. And Ron, this might, you know, this you you might talk to a student in one of George's classes, or I could even give you maybe, you know, a second source on it um, to to write in there. So, uh, the, this assignment is basically take whatever you did for your radio feature and write it up in a two-column script format as though it was a TV package, which means that um, you will be probably taking the actualities from your old script and using them again in this television format. And you're also going to be doing a lot of just basically making up B-roll. It's like if you know William William uh, uh, wrote a script about somebody who's you know succeeding in college and and uh, you know uh, you could have shots of her at City College you know doing stuff sitting in class walking from class to class holding books or whatever so you are you know you're free to think up the B roll that you would use because we're not a production class so you know if uh, if, if you're working on George, you might, let's see George in a classroom, let's see George at his home studio, you know, which is apparently really well equipped and stuff. Um, let's see George, you know, in interaction with colleagues or whatever. So, you know, the idea is, is that basically you're taking the, uh, the, the, the radio feature and you're, you're creating a visual side to it that, um, that works, but, you know, we can't actually go and shoot it. It's as though you were planning for it, basically. Um, so this should be two minutes thirty, as close as you can get. At this point, it you know, it varies a lot. Um, <clears throat> so let let's take a look at it. You know, write a two minute thirty news TV news package it includes the reporter's stand up. So this part. So the anchor is going to come in. They're going to say you know blah blah blah, and then they're going to turn it over to uh, KCSF's Chow Trung has the story. And then we get the reporter's stand up. Two sources, so you definitely have one source already in your script because you, you, know, you needed that interview, right? Now another, another possible source is if you can't talk to another person about this story, you can also find other background information like looking on, on the web. For instance, um, on Chow's story of the uh, young woman who does grip tape art on skateboards, she might use as a second source some source of information about, you know, this is a growing trend, there are more artists doing this. So you may give context instead of, um, instead of somebody talking, your, your second source might be information that you find on the web that you want to add in. So that is totally possible too. I realize I haven't checked the chat in a long time. So let's take a little breather and see that. Okay. And I noticed after last class that my chat does not refresh itself very well. Because I was missing all kinds of like comments. When I logged back in, I saw there had been all kinds of activity that I didn't see. So my apologies if you guys are out there and I'm really not seeing anything in chat. Okay, we'll see. Um, right, informational graphics as well. Is there a part of your story that could be told 
with a graphic. So uh, if that's so, a graphic would be something like um, super, you know, and then chart of, uh, you know, uh, college professors by, you know, diversity or whatever, something like that, or uh, chart of college professors by district or something. If your story is reporting on, you know, layoffs at a, at a school or something like that. So it's just what super would be useful for you to tell your story. So, you know, the thing to do on this one is, you know, uh, take, take your radio feature and imagine what it is you'd like to see while you are hearing your radio feature. And then add in a second source, either a little more information or comment from another person uh, at that time. So uh, what I say is get going on this with what you already have and then fill in what you need extra, you know. So for instance, take your radio script and it begins with the anchor. So copy paste the anchor in there, you know. Your lead in the radio, uh, radio feature, plug that in there which is part of your stand-up, right? And then as you go into your story, it's going to become VO. Now this is where you're going to start to imagine what types of things that you want to see. And again, it can be, you could write B-roll, just you know, maybe if it's a long shot, medium shot, or close up, or simply just what we're seeing, that's good enough. So again, I mean, you may be looking at it going, holy shit. I how can I do this? Well, the way to do it is take what you've already done and plug it into the two column format and then start seeing, well, what else do I need? Uh, I need video, so we'll find video. When somebody talks, you need supers, right? And who they are. So fill that stuff in. And I ask you, you know, for some kind of graphic. So what would that be? Uh, oh, I remember there's another example that we could look at here. Um, what would that be? Here he is. Charlie Brooker. Does that, long as does that name ring a bell? English dude? He's actually the producer and creator of Black Mirror. But before he became, in my mind, one of the most amazing television producers, uh, he did these kind of short humorous things back in England. So. This is his package. Before long, a standard news report visual language established itself, one that's immediately recognizable to anyone. Me has this report. It starts here with a lackluster establishing shot of a significant location. Next, a walkie-talkie preamble from the auteur, pacing steadily towards the lens, punctuating every other sentence with a hand gesture and ignoring all the pricks milling around him like he's gliding through the matrix before coming to a halt and posing a question. What comes next? Often something like this, a filler shot designed to give your eyes something to look at while my voice babbles on about facts. Sometimes it'll slow down to a halt, turn monochrome, and some of those facts will appear one by one on the screen. <laughs> this is followed by the obligatory shots of overweight people with their faces subtly framed out, after which the report is padded out with a selection of lazy and pointless vox pops. Um, usually get some inane chatter from people. I think they do have too much. I think. What we want to hear is actually what's happening and not what other people think of it. I, I hate these sound sound bites. That, that I, I don't want some punter's opinion usually. No. <laughs> another bit of dull visual abstraction to plug another gap now before the report segues gracefully into a bit of human interest courtesy of some dowdy man opening letters in a kitchen and explaining how he's been affected by the issue. When I'm watching the news, I don't really... You know, there's a person talking to me, telling me what's going on, and I don't really listen to what they're saying. It's just news. It's just news. 
He unfortunately was boring. So to wake you up, this is an animated chart. This is a silhouette representing the average family. And this is a lighthouse keeper being beheaded by a laser beam. Oh. At the end of the report, illustrative shots of pedestrians and signs and a pipe at a window. And then the final summary, ending on a whimsical shot of something nearby, accompanied by a wry sign-off. If you're lucky, a bit of wordplay fit for a king, or in other words, a regent's treat. Charlie Brooker, oh. Newswipe, London. That was that was really fun. That was good. Precisely two minutes as well. Charlie Brooker. Yeah. It was just fun. That always... Exactly. So you can see how much of a formula it is, you know. So take comfort in that. You know, the formula is worldwide and, and it's exactly, you know, we saw him as an anchor. He did his stand up walking towards the camera. That's cool. VO over, you know, dull visual abstractions. He had it all. He had it all perfect. I'm so. watch that again. <laughs> oh, you do like to? Let's watch that one more time. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I'm happy for it. My own okay, all right. So, Charlie Brooker, how to report the news? Yeah, I forgot his name, but it was it was I remembered how to report the news, BBC. So, so like I said, if you know Black Mirror, I mean, I think it's pretty amazing that um, you know, given the quality of that show. He also does some these pretty funny things as well. So that's the package assignment. And again, I, 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 uh, I know it's come at you a little too fast. I'm hoping you may have both of these ready for next Tuesday. Um, if you don't, uh, we can definitely go with the VOSOT uh, on our mandatory meeting on October 23rd. The VOSOT, I think, probably would take no more than an hour to actually do. Uh, your package will take longer, but as I said, to avoid freezing up and thinking this thing is huge, how do I do it? Really take the spirit that you are adapting your profile, your radio, pro, uh, you know, your radio feature, whether it's a profile or an event story. You know, start by doing that. You know, basically, put the radio profile stuff into your audio column, and then start thinking of what kind of visuals you need. Yeah, William. And from my understanding, the, the package assignment is more conceptual than the radio assignment was, where you don't actually have to have the, the video components and you don't actually have to have the second source, but to, uh, to create them to mock up a script? Well, no, I'd like the second source to be real. Okay. Uh, either a real person who knows who you wrote about okay. or a, you know, a, a real you know, set of facts about I don't know how many people are, you know, both part-time employed and full-time at school or something like that. You know, I mean, okay. so those could be dug up on the internet. So those can be factual. Okay. You know, depending on which way you want to go with it, you could have, you know, uh, but definitely the visual is all made up. Okay. It's wherever you think it should be. Think of the visual as kind of like your shot list. If you're the reporter, you know what you want the story to say. You're thinking, okay, I've got to get a cameraman for three hours. We're going to stop off at the place of work. We're going to you know, shadow her at City College to at least one class, mm -hmm. get some shots of her with a big bag of books and stuff going up and down the stairs. And then we'll also talk to her teacher. And that's it. You know, that's how this is done. And you know you've already done this type of stuff. So yeah, yeah, that's how it's done. Sure. So think of it as like your shot list that's happening over here. You know, something you would get if we were producing this. Brent, is, is it all making sense? Is it clear? Yeah? OK, good. Yeah. And Ron, I know you got a lot on your plate because you just finally got that interview from George. So as you know, you can, like I said, you take, take what you do in the radio feature and put it into the audio side of the, of the TV package, and you're three quarters of the way there. Yeah. All right. I did not see it, so we don't really need to create shots, images. Yes. Think of what you need. Yeah, you know, if it's, if it's a story about a river drying up, then, you know, long shot, riverbed drying up, you know. Okay. I am exhausted. How are you guys? We're, it's time to end class early, I think. I don't know if, we can, or if we're even allowed to do that streaming, but that's what we're going to do. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll let you guys go. I know Katerina says we are silent. 
Yeah, I hear you. Uh, if, if anyone streaming has any questions or something, I'll still be here and chat, but I'm going to let the folks in the classroom uh, who have been you know, graciously supporting me, only four of them today, <laughs> here helping me out. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you next Tuesday, and hopefully you'll have two scripts in hand, but one is great too.